Hi there, I trust that you are all doing well and that you're all rejoicing in the Lord Jesus and are encouraged and um, that you're holding on to the Lord Jesus because we need to hold on to the Lord Jesus uh, with all our hearts, hold on to the Lord Jesus for dear life as we are um, in these challenging times and um, I'm missing you all also and I can't wait uh, to see you all face to face and be able to um, have fellowship again and uh, it's only a short time so we're almost there and we'll be able to um, have normal church meetings again and as I think Uncle Dylan said we'll be able to worship together I've really been missing that um, singing and uh, just spending time uh, worshiping the Lord Jesus and time in his presence and um Anyways, I just have a few thoughts I'd like to share with you. And um, I, when these thoughts came to me, I was spending some time alone yesterday. or well, I was alone a bit and the Lord laid these thoughts on my heart. And I was so um, excited and I was so encouraged as they came to my heart. And I had the feeling of I just wanted to get out of this lockdown and go and get involved in the Lord's work and start telling um, people about the Lord Jesus. And I also realized in that moment that the Lord Jesus um, is really the only solution. There's so much heartache out there in the world. Um, there's so many people that feel lost. Um, there's so many people that are trying to find meaning in life. And um, the world often doesn't make sense because there's so much sin and the world's unfair. And the only answer is the Lord Jesus. And I was so persuaded by that and encouraged and um, I, as I said, I just couldn't wait to get out and uh, get our hands dirty, if I could uh, say that. Um, getting involved in the Lord's work because we serve an incredible God, a life-changing God. And um, so I want to share these thoughts with you and I hope that you they will encourage you and that you will um, also be challenged. But um, yeah, and um, really, as I pray that the Lord makes him real. Um, to your heart and as I said that you'll be encouraged like I was and before we get into the word <clears throat> it's just some thoughts I'd like to um, run through just to build up before I, um, towards what I want to share out the word but recently or not recently over the last day or two I've been listening to a podcast and um, it's a financial podcast and the name of the series is called FOMO Sapiens obviously it's a play on words um, us being homo sapiens and um, FOMO stands for fear of missing out and um, don't worry if you didn't know what that acronym means don't feel too old don't think it's all this 21st century jargon that these young kids use because I only found out um, relatively recently but it stands for fear of missing out and the and it's endorsed or uh, the podcast or the series is endorsed by um, Harvard Business School, so it's quite uh, reputable, and um, the gist of the podcast is really that business uh, leaders today um, are so fearful of missing out when they have to make decisions, and they present it with so many different business decisions and different options and different uh, avenues to explore, and there's so much data and information on all these avenues that they can go down and all these options they have to choose from and what happens is they're so fearful if they choose one option they're going to miss out on the profits of another option and what actually happens is um, they are so indecisive and they end up not making a decision or they make decisions too late and they, they take too much time to make a decision because they're so fearful of missing out and um, it's also a big thing um, amongst, I suppose, the younger people because we've got all the social media and I always say people only post the good stuff on social media and all the fun that they're having and <clears throat> we so easily are so fearful of missing out on the fun stuff and what happens is we seem to go through life just chasing experiences and the experiences at the end of the day leave us high and dry and so there's this word FOMO and fear of missing out and as I was listening to the podcast and thinking a bit about it I was just um, thinking um, in our spiritual lives how often have we not had FOMO in our spiritual lives in other words how often have we been so fearful of missing out on the things of this world that we put our spiritual walk on hold or we compromise our spiritual walk and guys compromise 
is a crazy thing because, um, and it's a scary thing because it starts small. That's how compromise is. But when you look again, that compromise has grown um, into a massive giant. And we're so far from the Lord Jesus because we have let compromise into our lives. And often the scary thing about compromise is we don't even see it um, ourselves. Um, the Lord Jesus really has to remind us and really has to challenge us for us to see it because often we are so blind to it. And um, as I said, I was thinking of this and how often um, when you share with people, they've got such a fear about what they have to give up before they have to, uh, if, oh, sorry, they have such a fear about what they have to give up when they choose Jesus. And they've got this fear of missing out um, on the pleasures of this world. And what actually can happen is they'll rather enjoy the temporary pleasures of this world and they'll miss out on eternity. We're so fearful. Often I was thinking about our, um, our commodity that's the worth the most to us is time. It's the only thing we can't buy. And we so we and time is limited. We only got 24 hours in a day. And often we don't want to give up our time to the Lord Jesus. We don't want to often give up time to spend time in his word. We want to often want to give up time to go and share God's word. We don't often want to give up time to get involved in his work because we're so fearful of this time and we enjoy having it um, to ourselves. I was also thinking about how we can have pride. And we've got a plan for our lives in our head. And we're so fearful that the Lord's plan um, is not going to match up nearly to our plan of, for our lives. And we're going to miss out on so much. And in our hearts, we say, we've got it together. So God, you just keep your plan to one side. And I'm just going to go on in my plan because I'm so fearful that your plan will intrude too much on my plan. And um, the other thing I was just thinking about is God's plan and his high works in our lives is that it's faith and faith we can't always see what's going to happen and we have to trust the Lord Jesus and all the things down here on this earth are often physical and we can see them and so we are so fearful to trust in God's plan because we can see the the, the pleasures down here and we want to rather enjoy them now and we struggle to have faith in God's plan and so this and I hope I'm bringing the points um across but so often we're so fearful of missing out on these temporary things we're so fearful about what we have to give up and how it's going to affect us that we're not prepared to buy into God's plan and guys as I said I've often I looked at my heart and I saw thought how much times if we can use that word fear FOMO I've had FOMO in my heart and I've missed out on God's plan that I've missed out on um on the amazing things that God has planned for me for um, you and I and for me, as I was thinking about myself. And guys, we can't have FOMO. We have to buy into God's plan 100% because the things down here are temporary. And um, I was so I've reminded of the story in yesterday and it all just fitted together so beautifully in um, Genesis uh, chapter 13. And what happens is just for some background, because I'm only going to read um, uh, one or two or three verses, is that Lot, um, Abraham, uh, um, God called Abraham to move and he said, Abraham, I'm going to take you to a place and I'm going to make a nation of you. And what happens is um, Lot, which is a family member of um, Abraham, he decides to follow Abraham and they follow each other. He follows Abraham around a while as God moves Abraham. But what happens is Lot's herdsmen that are looking after his sheep and his livestock and Abraham's herdsmen and uh, that are looking after his livestock and his sheep and his camels and so on, they start arguing and fighting with each other. And obviously, I'm guessing they're also probably fighting about land. There was not enough space for both of them. And um, what happens is, that um, Abraham calls him to uh, calls Lot and says, "Listen, yeah. Instead of us letting this family feud, letting this thing grow into family feud, and us fighting with each other, and us having bad bad blood amongst each other, let's rather split ways. You choose. You go to one direction, and I'll go to one direction. And they're standing at a point, and it would seem, as you read the word on one side, the the um." the I want to say the the nature or the um and I can't think of the word the geography of the place and the land and so it wasn't so lush and on the other side it was very lush 
and uh, fruitful. And this is where we pick up the story. It's in Genesis chapter um, um, 13 and verse 9. And they at that point of the decision, and it says, Is not the whole land before thee? This is Abraham speaking. Separate thyself, I pray thee, from me. If thou wilt take the left hand, then I will go to the right. Or if thou depart to the right hand, then I will go to the left. So Abraham says, Lot, you make the decision. If you choose left, I'll go right. If you choose right, I'll go left. And in verse 10, And Lot lifted up his eyes, and beheld all the plain of Jordan, that it was well watered everywhere before the Lord destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah, even as the garden of the Lord, like the land of Egypt, as thou comest unto Zoar. Then Lot chose him all the plain of Jordan, and Lot journeyed east, and they separated themselves the one from the other. And Abraham dwelled in the land of Canaan, and Lot dwelled in the cities of the plain, and pitched his tent towards Sodom. But the men of Sodom were wicked and sinners before the Lord exceedingly. And if you read the story, and as I started and I shared a bit about that concept of FOMO, it would seem that Lot... Um, found himself in the situation he stood there with Abraham and he looked to the right on the one side or the left I can't remember which way and it said it was lush and it was green and it was beautiful and I don't know uh, all the guys who read about um in the Bible, except Jesus were human like us, so I can imagine he must have thought, goodness, look at that beautiful green grass. I can imagine myself having a picnic over there. Um I can imagine, look at the soil, I can imagine planting over there, and I can imagine the millies coming up, and they don't have just two or three heads, five heads, because the soil has so, got so much nutrients in it, and um, it looks like such a great place, and everything looks beautiful, and um, I also was thinking, you probably looked at the grapes, and uh, the honey, and the milk, because it would seem that's what they looked at um, in those times, because you remember when the spies went into the promised land, uh, but on in the Bible, they came back and spoke about the, the milk and the honey and the grapes. And Lot looked at everything and it was so pleasing to the eyes. And he said, Abraham, I'll take the nice side. You can go to the deserted side. But it says over there, as I read in the last um, verse, it says that in Sodom, the men were wicked and sinners before the Lord exceeding. In other words, it was so beautiful on the outside and all the stuff to your eyes, to Lot's eyes looked so pleasing. But inside, there were wicked men. And isn't it really the picture of the world? And um, I was thinking of um, what my dad shared and how Jesus was tempted and how um, devil tempted the Lord Jesus with all the pleasures, the one temptation. He tempted him with all the pleasures of of this life and it looks so attractive and to our flesh it's so attractive because deep down it's desperately wicked and um and it will ruin our lives it will leave us high and dry and it's only temporary and lots what happened was he looked there and he said i want that and um i was and i want that and i don't care if there's wickedness in it i love it and it looks like it'll be pleasing and it'll satisfy my flesh and guys the world's exactly like that there's so many pleasures out there that are satisfied to our flesh but and so quickly we choose the world over the lord jesus and guys underneath it looks so beautiful on the top but underneath it's rotten to the core and i was thinking you know um lot couldn't see the whole of abraham's plan at that point and so he didn't understand everything. But if we look back, and we look back at Abraham and Lot's life, I don't know about you, but I'd much rather be part of the Abraham camp than part of the Lot camp. Because if we look part, back at Abraham and his little bit of faith that he had, or a lot of faith that he had, and it ended up him being a father of a many nations and it ended up Jesus coming from his lineage. The plan was so great. All the Lord Jesus required was a little bit of faith. But so often we look at the pleasures of this life and we're so attracted to it and we're so short-sighted and we're so fearful of missing out and we want to have fun now and we don't want the Lord Jesus to intrude on our lives that we rather choose the temporary things and the stuff that is pleasing to our eyes over God's great plan for our lives. And guys, I want to say that, you know, God's plan the stuff of this world might bring, the stuff of this world brings temporary pleasure. But when we're in the Lord Jesus' plan, the freedom that we enjoy, the peace that we enjoy, and um, the satisfaction that we enjoy, we can't compare it 
to the things that the world and the devil puts before us. Because 99% of the time, the stuff in the world leaves us um, in with heartache and broken hearts. And Uncle Steph shared about King Agrippa and how you can go watch on Sunday and how Paul was brought before him. And uh, those verses that Uncle Steph read where King Agrippa said, Almost Paul, you persuade me. But I'm sure, so sure King Agrippa looked and he looked at Paul and he saw how much you had to give up to be a Christian and how much per, how much you are persecuted if you're a Christian. And he was fearful in his heart and he said, I can't give up. I enjoy being a king. I enjoy being in control. And look, it's going pretty well, my plan. I'm in a much better place than you are, Paul. And he, and he disregarded the Lord Jesus. And he held on to the temporary things of this world. And guys... We must still, and I'm just saying this, and you often, most of you know my heart, we, there's still, it's important to enjoy the things of this life and so on. But guys, let's check our hearts. Have we had FOMO in our hearts, if I could put it that way? Have we been holding on to the things of this world? Have we been saying, Lord Jesus, I just can't give up. I'm enjoying the, the pleasures of this world too much. And I, I, and I can't buy into your plan. And I want to end like this, this part of what I'm sharing that guys we can only experience the fullness and the freedom and the peace and the satisfaction of God's plan when we are 100% sold out to it we can't have a bit of the world and a bit of Jesus we have to have all of Jesus and guys let's check our hearts maybe we've been enjoying the pleasures of this world a bit too much and guys when we get it to the end of our lives as I said if we look back at Abraham and Lot's life it will be worth it if we choose the Lord Jesus and you go read all those famous men in Hebrews chapter 11 guys heroes of faith they will all tell you that it was worth it maybe it was often 99% of the time it was difficult but it was worth it guys let's not have FOMO let's not fear of missing out on the world the, what Jesus has planned for our lives is so much greater and what happens is the story goes on in the next few chapters a few things happens in Abraham's life but in Genesis chapter 18 God sends three men divine men it would seem to meet with Abraham and they explain to Abraham a bit about how him and Sarah are going to have a um, have a child and Sarah laughs because she's already quite older and then what happens is the men also tell Abraham that they are, that God has found Sodom to be wicked and that he is going to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah and you know the story so well um, Abraham asks and I, this is all in uh, chapter 18 towards the end of chapter 18 you can go read it I don't want to waste time reading it but Abraham asks uh, the angels please don't destroy it if you can just find 50 people there will you not destroy it and God says if I can find 50 people I won't destroy it and you know um, he can't find 50 and it comes down from 45 to 40 to 30 to 10 to 20 to 10 and God can't even find 10 righteous people in the whole of Sodom and Gomorrah and I was thinking 10 you can count on both your hands you don't you got 10 fingers it's not a lot of people but God couldn't even find 10 people righteous in the whole of Sodom and Gomorrah and so what happens is um yeah, and I've jumped a bit, but God sends the angels into Sodom and Gomorrah, these divine men. And he says, just find 10 people and they go meet with Lot. And that's in um, Genesis chapter 19. And as they meet with Lot, they sell Lot that they're going to sleep in the streets or stay on the streets in the night. But Lot says, please come inside. You don't understand how wicked this place is. And um what happens is, and this is where we're going to pick up, as they're inside and they're about to go to sleep, the men of the city come and they want to um, they want to sleep and have a gay relationship, which is how wicked their hearts were with these men. And that's how wicked it is. And I just want to read those verses. And he says, and he pressed upon them greatly and they turned in unto him. So in other words, Lot asks him and begs them to come inside and they come inside. And they entered into his house, and he made them a feast, and did bake unleavened bread, and they did eat. But before they lay down, the men of the city, even the men of Sodom, compassed the house round about, both old and young, all the people from the quarter. And they called unto Lot, and said unto him, Where are the men which came into that night? Bring them out unto us, that we may know them. 
And Lot went out the door unto them and shut the door after them and said, I pray thee, brethren, do not so wickedly. Behold, I have two daughters which have not known men. Let me, I pray you, bring them out unto you and do you to them as is good to in your eyes. Only unto these men do nothing, for therefore came they under the shadow of my roof. And they said, Stand back. And they said again, This one fellow came into sojourn, and he will needs to be judged. Now we will deal worse with thee there than with them. And they pressed sore upon the men, even Lot, and came near to break the door. And so what happens is they say, We want these men, and Lot says, Don't touch his men. And he said, you can even have my pure virgin daughters. And they're so wicked in their hearts. They said, we don't want your virgin daughters. We want the men. And so the story goes on. God says to Lot, I'm going to destroy this place. You need to get out of here. And what Lot gathers his family as quick as he can. And as he's running out and the brimstone starts falling on and the fire starts falling on uh, Sodom and Gomorrah. And there was one instruction that Lot gave to um, that Jesus, that God gave to Lot, and that was that they mustn't look back as they run out of this city as God destroys it. And what happens in verse 26, but his wife looked back from behind him and she became a pillar of salt. And so Lot's wife looked back and she became a pillar of salt. And guys, you know, there was just a few thoughts I want to come out of the story. I was thinking of God's grace and how um, he was prepared not to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah if he could find 50 people. He was prepared not to so, uh, destroy Sodom and Gomorrah if he um, could find 40, uh, 45, 40, 30, 10, 20. And he really tried with all his heart to find a few good people. And I was thinking God should have destroyed the whole earth. It was not long, just a few chapters before we read about Noah and how it grieved God's heart that he created man. And he says, I will destroy the whole um, world underwater and just save eight people because they're so wicked. And this is not long afterwards that mankind finds themselves in the same wicked state. And I wonder in God's heart, he said, I've just he never in his heart again said, I grieve me that I made man. I gave you a second chance not a lot, not long ago, and you already find yourself in such wickedness. And guys, there's that verse I was reminded on if in 2, 2 Peter chapter 3. You can go read it. It speaks about Jesus coming back and people mock um, the Christians because um, everyone speaks about Jesus coming back, but he hasn't returned yet. And and Peter writes in 2 Peter chapter 3, The Lord is not slack concerning his promise. So some men count slackness, but he is long-suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish, that but that all should come to repentance. In other words, Peter's writing there that God is not slack in keeping his promise, but it would seem that he's waiting and he's waiting and he's waiting because as, so that as many people as possible can find Jesus so that he can have a relationship with them and so that he doesn't have to destroy them. Because in the same way God destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah, at the end of the day he's going to destroy the whole world and all the wickedness in it and the devil with it. And he's waiting and he's showing grace in the same way as Abraham begged God to please just wait. And God waited and waited and waited and he dropped the number in the same way God waits and waits. And I don't know if you're watching tonight and you might not be right with God. He's waiting for you to find Jesus. And he says, I want to have a relationship. I'm willing as Peter writes, God's willing that none shall perish. His plan wasn't for everyone to go to hell. His plan was for everyone to come to heaven and be sons and have a relationship with him. But guys, we have to choose Jesus and we have to buy into his plan and we have to take um, a step of faith. And guys, God's grace is extended so far. Let's not despise God's grace. Let's not say, God, I'd rather do my own plan. God, I'm so fearful of what I have to give up. I want to do my own way. God, I'm enjoying Sodom and Gomorrah too much that, um, that I don't want to buy into your plan. And guys, you know, this is the next point I want to make, and I'm almost finished now, is guys, we can't enjoy God's plan and our own plan. We can't enjoy the world and the Lord Jesus. And um, I often, I've read the story often and thought, 
Surely Lot, why didn't Lot leave earlier if this place was so wicked? If the men, their hearts were so wicked that they were wanted to sleep with the visitors. They said, give them unto us so we can, that, um, and we can destroy them. If it was so wicked, why didn't Lot leave? Maybe he was enjoying Sodom and Gomorrah a bit too much. Why didn't he leave Suva sooner? Why didn't he call up Abram and say, man, the Lord's using Abram and the plan's in big. Let me stick with Abram. And uh, as I said, maybe he was enjoying Sodom and Gomorrah too much. And I looked at um, I looked at his wife and that just really doesn't it back my point. Because it would seem she was running away and she didn't, in her heart she said, man, I was kind of enjoying that Sodom and Gomorrah. Let me just take one last look at those beautiful lush lands. Let me maybe take long one last look at the pleasures that I've enjoyed that I'm actually going to miss. And God turns her into a pillow of salt. And I was reminded um, of somewhere in one of the Gospels, you'll have to, have to find it for you, where God says that, it's, that there's no space in the kingdom of God for someone who puts their hand to the plow and looks back. And guys, we can't look back. And maybe we've had FOMO in our hearts and we kind of just looking back at the world and we're living in a time of grace at the moment where God looks past it and he keeps on reaching. But there's coming a time and maybe he comes and you've looked back one time too many and the Lord Jesus um, has to leave you benign and ultimately destroy you with the rest of the world. And guys, we can't look back. And I just want to encourage you guys. The plan's so big for our lives as it was for Abraham. And we're so near the end of Jesus coming to fetch us. Let's not um, get too comfortable in this world. Let's check our hearts. Let's take account of our lives and make sure that maybe we're looking back too much. Maybe we're enjoying the pleasures of this life a little too much. And maybe we look back and the Lord Jesus arrives at that moment that we're looking back. And at the moment, we are a bit far from God, and unfortunately, He has to leave us behind. And I was so encouraged. I thought, as I was thinking of the story, I thought that our summer wanted to run away with a blindfold on. I don't mind tripping. I don't mind falling. But I don't want to look back at the city because I want to be in God's plan. I actually want to leave the pleasures of this life before God comes and destroys it and find, and find the Lord Jesus. And guys, we can't... Um, we can't look back. And um, the last point, which is the most beautiful point. You know, in the same way that God sent those divine people into Sodom and Gomorrah to find, try and find righteous people um, in Sodom and Gomorrah, and he could find none. And before Jesus came and died on the cross for us, if God had to send Men into the world to try and find righteous people. Let me tell you, he wouldn't find one. Because as the Bible says, the heart of man is desperately wicked. And there's that other verse of how men burn in their lusts. You and I are burning in our lusts until we met the Lord Jesus. Our hearts are still desperately wicked if it wasn't for the Lord Jesus who came into our hearts. And as I said, if God before Jesus came, if God had to send people into this world, he would have found none righteous. But our story is so different to Sodom and Gomorrah because Jesus came. And guess what? He qualified you and I and he made you and I righteous. Not because we did anything, but because he did everything on the cross of Calvary. And all he's asking is to buy into the plan and take a step of faith. And he can send and if I can put it like this, and it's not like that, but when he comes to fetch his church and he looks for the righteous, he'll find righteous people because of his son that paid the price and because of the son's blood that covers our lives and paid for your and my sin. Isn't that an incredible thought that the Lord Jesus will find righteous people, not because our hearts are good and not because we've got it together, but because we know the Lord Jesus. And as I said earlier, I want to encourage whoever is watching, choose the Lord Jesus so that when he returns, that he can, find, he can find you righteous. And he can take you back to spend eternity within in heaven where it will all be worth it. Um, I suppose when we get to heaven, there will be opposite FOMO. There will be FOMO that we, why don't we buy into God's plan more? Because it's so incredible as we look back and as we sit with the Lord Jesus. For eternity with him. And I love that thought 
And I says, I said, and I, maybe I'm repeating myself now, but as I was I said, having my quiet time, it just broke my heart. That, you know, God finds righteous people in this world, not because we've got it together or we are good people, but because we've, we've accepted Jesus and his blood covers us and he's paid for our sins. And so in other words, in the same way, God made a way for Lot out of Sodom and Gomorrah. God made, God made a way through Jesus for you and I to escape destruction and be part of of a great of the greatest plan of all time and guys um, I just want to really in ending and I hope these thoughts made sense to you um, and that they followed a line but I want to encourage you guys let's not hold on to the things of this world and get too tied up in this world and to get and enjoy the pleasures of this life too much Let's rather bow 100% into the Lord Jesus' plan. And let's not let our eyes and uh, deceive us. Because we so often look and we say, man, it looks so nice, these things of this world. And we, and we don't buy into the Lord's plan. But let's buy 100% into the Lord's plan. Let's have 100% faith like Abraham in the Lord's plan. And guys, um, let's not look back. Let's, not, let's ask the Lord Jesus to really do a work in our heart so that... We never look back and we never long for um, the, the pleasures of this world like Lot's wife did. Because maybe we look back one too many times and unfortunately we miss out. And lastly, guys, I want to encourage you, you know, we're living in a time of grace and God has done gone out of his way. He couldn't have gone out of his way more for us to have a relationship with him and for us to be found righteous. And so, guys, if you're out there and, um, and you're not right with the Lord Jesus, I want to I want to ask you, not because it, it does any favors for us or for the fellowships we're part of, but really, it really sets you free and it enables you to spend eternity with the Lord Jesus, and it really gives purpose to life. And I want to encourage, and it's never too late. It doesn't matter what age you are to um, call on the Lord Jesus and take that step of faith. And so I want to leave you with those thoughts and I'm going to close in prayer. Lord Jesus, we thank you for your goodness, Lord. And we thank you, Lord, that even though we are in lockdown and we're far apart, Lord, that we've got your word and that we're also able to share with each other over social media. And Lord Jesus, I really pray, Lord, um, as you've made these thoughts real to my heart, that you'll just um, make them real to everyone who uh, listens to this video, Lord Jesus, and Lord, that they will look to you, Lord, and they'll look away from the things of this uh, world, Lord, and buy into your plan, Lord, and also pray for those that are watching that maybe aren't in right standing with you, Lord, and I really pray from the bottom of my heart, and because I love all those people, even though I suppose I don't know them all, Lord, but they'll make a decision to follow you with all their heart, Lord, that they'll take that step of faith and call out to you, and we pray this in your name, and we give you all the glory, Lord Jesus. Amen.